Welcome to Sheboygan County Government, working for you. I'm Dan Lemieux, Chairman of the Sheboygan County Board, and I co-host this program with Adam Payne, our Administrative Coordinator. And today our focus is going to be on our Land and Water Conservation Department. We have with us Pat Miles, the Director of that department today. And we are going to focus on that department and some of the services you provide, Pat, through your department. But just to start off, uh, we are the 12th largest county in population, I believe. We have somewhat over 300,000 acres of land in the county. Correct. Um, approximately two-thirds of that in agricultural use, 200,000 acres. And uh, some of the relationship you have with that, that portion of our county is what we're going to be talking about today. So maybe we could start, Pat, by just telling us a little bit about yourself and, and your background, and, and especially in regards to this department. Sure. Thanks, Dan. Um, I grew up on a dairy farm in uh, southwest Wisconsin. Um, after I graduated from high school, I spent some time out in Montana. Uh, after that, I attended Fox Valley Technical College in Appleton. Um, graduated in 77, uh, spent uh, part of the summer as an intern in Fond du Lac County in a similar type job, and uh, began employment with Sheboygan County in uh, October 77. So maybe you could you know, tell us a little bit about the department now and what the mission and responsibilities are of the department? The, uh, the mission of the Land and Water Conservation Department, Dan, is to uh, provide technical and uh, educational assistance in the uh, management of soil and water uh, resources, the use of two uh, Sheboygan County land users. Um, the, some of the responsibilities and the big one is to administer policies and programs are set forth by the Sheboygan County Board. And the staff in your department to take care of these these functions that you... We have a, uh, currently we have a staff of eight. Um, we have a combined total of uh, just a little over 108 years of combined service uh, presently in the department. Um, some of the, fa uh, the, the, the staff, uh, the focus is on uh, some of our program areas which include uh, the Farmland Preservation Program which is uh, conservation compliance in dealing with erosion control. Uh, the state uh, 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 provides tax credits to those land users that, that meet those, those standards. Uh, we have the wildlife damage program where we uh, provide assistance in abatement and claims. Um, as you know, we have a large deer herd and uh, geese in the county. We have our priority watershed projects. Uh, we have three we currently administer. Um, through those projects, we provide uh, technical and financial assistance provided through the state uh, to land users in those watersheds. And uh, those, uh, those land users uh, generally install water quality improvement practices um, in the watersheds on their respective farms. We have a buffer strip program, cost share program, which we uh, are in our third year. Uh, we have a variety of other, other programs, tree and shrub program uh, that we provide. And there's other miscellaneous type uh, activities and services we provide, um, surveying, um, design, um, a lot of technical assistance type, type request. You mentioned the deer herd. This isn't one of the questions that we talked about earlier, but this isn't a deer herd that we are raising deer for. I mean, this is, this is the deer population in Sheboygan County. Yes. Yes, I don't, want, I don't want any of our viewers right, to think that, right. that we are that we are raising a bunch no. of deer somewhere in Sheboygan no. County. That, okay, uh, you mentioned water quality mm -hmm. uh, as as one of your focuses. Um, maybe you could just tell us a little bit about the importance of water quality to the residents of of the county, not just in these rural areas, mm -hmm. but throughout all of Sheboygan County. Sure. Um, I think the, the first and foremost uh, reason uh, people should probably be concerned with water quality is that we all drink the water. Um, whether you uh, get your water source from Lake Michigan or from a private well, um, we all have an impact somewhat on uh, what that water quality becomes through our, our, our just our existence. So uh, uh, important, the important fact was the, the drinking part of it. The second part is the recreation. Um, use of our waters, whether it be uh, fishing, swimming, boating. As you know, in uh, Sheboygan County, we were blessed with water resources with uh, Lake Michigan uh, right on our doorstep, and of course we have inland lakes and a, and, and a river system. So I would say those are the important reasons that we should be concerned. 
we're probably all concerned about our, our water and what we're drinking and, and uh, not just that it smells good and looks good, but that right. it's, it's not harmful to our bodies. But, but what, what programs do you have or what, what can we do as a population in Sheboygan County to improve that quality of the water? We, we talk about it and, mm -hmm. and we're concerned about it, but mm -hmm. what can we do? Mm -hmm. um, we have uh, basically two, uh, a, a two-sided problem. One is the urban uh, part of the, uh, the problem. One is the rural, and I'll just go into the urban a little bit. Um, if you're an urban uh, resident, there are simple things you can do to uh, improve the water quality of your surroundings, of the water that runs off your property. Um, one is um, the proper use of fertilizers on your lawn. Um, if you overapply fertilizers or herbicides, you get a heavy rainfall. Of course, that's going to end up in the storm sewer, which ultimately ends up in, in Lake Michigan. Uh, a second part, and it's more extensive, is, is stormwater management, which, uh, as you know, the city of Sheboygan is quite involved with right now, where the excess rainfall is contained and some of those sediments and such settle out before the water is released. Um, in the rural sector, uh, there are a number of, of things that can be done and that are being done. Um, uh, farm, farming practices, um, whether it be uh, uh, rotational farming, where you grow a series of crops in different years. Um, there's conservation tillage. There's a proper, a proper application of animal waste so that we're not over applying and, and then again the runoff gets into our streams and lakes. Um, there's buffer strips that can be put along the streams and rivers and such to filter out some of those, some of that runoff that will occur, um, especially this time of year when you have the heavy rainfall and we don't have the crop cover established yet. So you will get some. Um, those, those types of uh, activities. You didn't mention uh, industrial contamination in, in the water systems. Does your department get involved with that at all? Or, or I mean, we've heard over the last 20, 30 years, and uh, especially in, in the Sheboygan River, uh, some of the problems. Uh, is, does your department get involved with that at all? No, not, not to a big degree. Um, those types of problems are, are, are more handled by the Department of Natural Resources mm -hmm. and the EPA, the Environmental Protection Agency, at the national level. Okay, so you're, right. you're more involved with residential and, and the, the local the, the agricultural uses exit, and things right. like that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, in the area of agriculture, I think we've seen uh, a lot of the farms, in, not just in Sheboygan County, but in, in Wisconsin in general, where a lot of the smaller farms have been consolidated mm -hmm. into, into larger operations right. in, in Wisconsin. Being the dairy state, I, we see that in, in the dairy industry quite a bit, where the, the larger operations and larger operations bring larger problems. Um, what is your involvement in that area where, where these, these farms are being consolidated and what help can you give to these individuals? Um, as you know, that, that trend is occurring in Sheboygan County uh, as we speak. Um, as an example, we have a situation where we have three landowners that, that recently formed a, a, a partnership and we've been uh, working with the individuals uh, since day one as far as just citing the, the uh, the, the operation and making sure that the animal waste system, storage system, is placed properly so that we're not uh, too close to a drilled well or we're too close to uh, surface runoff. Um, we'll provide uh, design assistance for the, the waste management system itself. Um, we, uh, we issue a waste storage permit once they get to that point, if they want to build the, the system and operate it. We'll work with the uh, landowners on a nutrient management plan where we will provide information and uh, areas where those landowners can safely apply that animal waste so that it, it uh, does not uh, end up in our streams and lakes. And the trick there is to, is to balance the crop needs with the amount of waste that's applied. So uh, those are the areas that, that we work with pretty much. And it's one-on-one. And, it's -on -one. and uh, with the operations getting to three, four, five hundred animals, um, it sometimes become, becomes a challenge, but uh, it can be done. And you have staff people that are, that, that is their primary responsibility, yes. working with that, that group of uh, farmers and, yes. and individuals? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we provide uh, some of the engineering services as far as the animal waste system. We'll provide the, some of the surveying, the actual surveying, um, some of the design work, and some of it's pretty intensive. Uh, we use AutoCAD uh, in our office for some of the designs. Um, 
you're looking at some of these systems that might be two and three million gallons in capacity. So it does take a bit of um, engineering behind them. And your feeling is that in the last, uh, since you've had some of these programs in place, that we've been able to improve the, uh, the quality of our rivers and, and streams in Sheboygan County? I think we've had an impact. Um, there's, of course, there's much more to be done, but, uh, but I think we're having an impact, yes. Mm -hmm. Going in the right direction. We're going in the right direction. Right. Right. Earlier, Pat, you mentioned some of the, the main programs that the department administers, and I think you said the nonpoint pollution program and farmland preservation, mm -hmm. and there are a number of state and federal programs that our county staff are, in, are uh, administering here. Mm -hmm. And we all know that locally led conservation is key to success, and it's what the landowners are doing that uh, make a real difference on water quality and nutrient management and, and many of the items you described. Two years ago, I understand you led efforts to develop a, a local land and water resource management plan. Uh, what did that entail? What did that involve? Uh, what that basically entailed was uh, assembling a, a group of uh, individuals from around the county um, that wanted to serve on an advisory uh, committee to somewhat drive the, uh, the formulation of the land water plan. We had a, uh, 37 members that uh, became involved and uh, through a series of meetings, we uh, established some, some important uh, resource uh, priorities or concerns in the county. Um, we ranked those and then we uh, established some goals and objectives to uh, carry out some of the main priority ones. So you had 37 people from across the community sit down around a table, yes. I imagine a number of meetings, yes. discuss priorities, key concerns to the yes. people living here. Mm -hmm. What were some of those priorities established? Some of those priorities that were established was uh, uh, water quality improvement was the number one um, priority. Everybody had a concern with water quality and where we were at uh, with that. Um, the second one was um, nutrient management. Uh, I think the fact that Dan just mentioned with uh, the bigger farms uh, coming into play in the county that uh, nutrient management play a bigger role and that we can address the, the animal waste uh, problem. And the, uh, the third priority that, uh, that we ranked was the, uh, the uh, subdivision and uh, construction site erosion where, as you know, we're, we have quite a bit of development going on and uh, people were concerned that we were losing a lot of uh, sediment off these construction sites, subdivision sites. And to date, we've been talking a lot about the work in the agricultural community and how that's two-thirds of the land represented right. in Sheboygan County, but isn't your breakout about 60, 40, 60 percent in the rural areas and 40 percent in more of the urban areas? Or I, I would say that's fairly accurate. Yeah. So yeah. with the um, water quality as being the number one objective, I know you were real pleased when uh, Sheboygan County established its first local cost share program, the buffer program. Tell us a little yeah. bit more about sure. that. And I want to thank the county board for, for establishing that. Um, and I think we're, we're providing some leadership in the state in that area. Uh, we're in our second year uh, of the buffer strip program. Uh, we have uh, the county board appropriated $50,000, as you know, for this year. Um, what that actually entails is we will go out and we'll contact various landowners where there's a need for a buffer. Um, if it is cropland, we'll uh, work with a landowner, sometimes just negotiation, where we will um, negotiate a, a certain width along that stream or, or river and uh, have the landowner establish that in, in either grasses or maybe even tree planting. And the width will vary, of course, uh, anywhere from 30 to, to 100 feet. And uh, what, what happens is when you establish that buffer, um, that will tend to filter the, the runoff from the surrounding fields uh, before it reaches the body of water. And in turn, the landowner then, then is uh, provided some incentive or some financial assistance to establish that buffer because we are um, taking some of that land out of production, but uh, the landowner still must pay taxes. So by providing an incentive or a cost-sharing incentive to the landowner, that land not only stays on the tax rolls, but uh, the landowner also um, benefits by having, having the land in buffer and the public as well. Now, just before the program started, we were talking a little bit with the rains that we're receiving, right. uh, how chocolate brown that, that river or rivers mm -hmm. or streams can become. If, if buffers are, are more prevalent throughout the county, will that make a difference in our water quality? That will make a big difference. Um, is it, at this time of year, as I mentioned before, there isn't a whole lot of crop cover out there. The fields are quite exposed. So when you do get a rainfall event and it, and it doesn't take much, 
uh, in amount of rainfall. Um, a buffer will have a big effect on, 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 the, on the runoff that does get to that stream. Now with $50,000 that the county board has allocated, which again, it's our first local cost yes. year program, mm -hmm. so it's a, it's a step in the right mm -hmm. direction. I imagine you have to do some prioritizing in terms of what you're going to target in the county. Yes. Um, this year we have uh, three townships that we prioritized, the um, town of uh, Herman, the town of Sheboygan Falls, and the town of Linden. And uh, we have, uh, through our, our GIS mapping, have, have identified areas that uh, would benefit from buffers. Of course, there are a lot of areas that are naturally buffered. We don't work with those. But those areas of, the, of those three townships where a buffer is, uh, we think, is, is needed, we'll, uh, we'll contact a landowner and work with them and give them some proposals as far as what we could offer them as far as a buffer strip program. Outstanding. What, what streams or rivers would, would that include in those townships? The uh, streams and rivers, uh, any of the large named rivers, the, uh, uh, like the Sheboygan River, um, the Onion River, uh, the Pigeon River, um, and some of the smaller streams, uh, Fisher Creek comes to mind as around Howard's Grove, and there are some unnamed as well. But um, it's been quite successful. It's, uh, the landowners have, have uh, taken to it, and they, they, uh, they like it. Uh, like I said, it's, uh, it's a win-win for the landowners and, and the county and the public. And I know you have a newsletter that you people can sign up for and you send out and give up updates. You, you said that you contacted the landowner if you felt that it was beneficial right. and in a targeted mm -hmm. area. Mm -hmm. But landowners can also contact you. Oh, sure. And we have that, too. And uh, um, usually a first-come, first-served basis. And a landowner, when they do approach, um, they probably have a, a problem or they perceive a problem on their property, and that's why they're, they're contacting us. And it, it probably would benefit okay. from the program. Now, you said that generally it's grasses, but you said it can be trees, and I know that yes. you have a very successful yes. tree shrub program. Tell yes. us a little bit about yes. that. Um, every fall, we, uh, we uh, announce our tree program. This is our third year that we've, we've uh, provided that, that program. Uh, we've sold uh, over 70,000 trees and shrubs uh, this year. As a matter of fact, as we're speaking, the trees are being loaded on a truck. Um, they'll be delivered uh, tonight or tomorrow and uh, we'll have to sort those trees, those and shrubs. Uh, we had uh, a little over 400 landowners in Sheboygan County and, and outside the county order these trees. Uh, very minimal cost. Um, the uh, minimum order size is 25, and uh, the cost is very reasonable, uh, starting at $12, $14 per 25. Uh, they are on the small side. They're, they're one to two years old. However, uh, for the price, um, we think it's a good, a good, good bargain. Um, and we have uh, uh, some landowners that are participating in the buffer program have ordered trees from us. So mm -hmm. we can provide that service to these uh, individuals as well. And they can get a, a quite a large area planted to trees at minimal cost. Very good. Um, so how do people learn more about the tree program, the, the buffer program, mm -hmm. some of the other services you provide? Um, they can uh, subscribe to our newsletter or uh, they can go to our website, which will probably be up and running around May 1st, I believe, and we'll have a lot of that information on there. Um, next fall, when we announce our program, we'll actually have the tree order form on there, and they'll be able to order right off of there. Okay. Sure. Now, you've talked about the non-point pollution program, yes. the farmland preservation program, a local cost share buffer program, a tree shrub program. I know you work with uh, subdivisions and providing mm -hmm. services there on, on natural resource protection. Um, I assume there's got to be a lot of coordination with the Department of Natural Resource, the Department of Agriculture, the Natural Resource Conservation Service, Extension. Are, are you working with those agencies? Is there coordination? Uh, we work with those agencies, Adam, basically on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, as far as water quality, which I've talked at length about, um, as you know, DNR is the, the state agency basically in charge of water quality for the state. So when we deal with our watershed projects or, or any project dealing with water quality, we tend to, to work with DNR hand in hand. We do have to coordinate programs and such. Uh, Department of Ag, we also work with just by its name. It uh, deals with agriculture. We deal with agriculture. The uh, UW Extension, of course, is our, our educational arm. Uh, many times we have uh, questions from landowners or just from the public dealing with certain agricultural activities. and We can't be a specialists in every field, but we do have access to the UW uh, extension and their, their wealth of knowledge. Uh, we work with um, 
Wisconsin Conservation Corps. Uh, we have a crew housed in our location in uh, 650 Forest Avenue in Sheboygan Falls. And this, uh, this program gives uh, young adults an opportunity to pursue some education and to do some uh, meaningful work around the county, whether it be for Sheboygan County, it might be for uh, a park or the state forest or something of that nature. So we house them as well, and they, and they provide a lot of uh, benefit and services to the county residents also. Very good. Well, the final question I have before turning it back to, to Dan is, we have discussed a lot of programs, but I know an up-and-coming uh, program that you're going to be administering and that the county board is soon going to be acting on is uh, non-metallic uh, mining reclamation. Right. What's happening right. with that? The, uh, the state um, recently uh, uh, mandated that uh, all counties um, participate or, or, or become involved in the non-metallic mining reclamation program. Uh, Sheboygan County uh, has developed a draft ordinance um, that has been sent to uh, uh, Department of Natural Resources for review and as you know it was introduced to the, the county board last Tuesday. Uh, I believe it was referred to the Highway Committee for, for further review. Um, that will be coming back to the county board in May, the May uh, county board meeting. The, that ordinance will become effective as of June 1. And uh, what it basically uh, does is uh, mine operators will need to submit for an automatic permit to continue mining. They have a two-month window. Um, what that permit basically does is uh, establish a time frame so that these uh, operations can submit a reclamation plan for that operation so that when uh, the activity is, uh, ceases, the mining ceases, that there's a plan in place to reclaim claim that site. As the chairman and I both know, we had the opportunity to fly over the county uh, about a year or so ago with our, uh, our airport director, and there are a lot yes. of uh, yes. non-metallic mines in Sheboygan yes. County. So in short, what does this mean? These are new ones are going to be reclaimed, mm -hmm. old ones will be reclaimed. What, what does this ordinance mean in short? The, the ordinance basically deals with the new operations and the existing. Um, those operations where there, there is no activity but the, the, the scar is still there, those will not be addressed but uh, any current mine and any new mine that would come into existence will be addressed through the ordinance where a reclamation plan will be required and uh, there will be uh, requirements to be met to uh, carry out that plan. Okay, so. thank you. Mm -hmm. Pat, uh, land use and, and those issues continue to be a topic in Sheboygan County, uh, protection of our natural resources, those, that whole area. And last fall, in November, uh, Sheboygan County passed a, a referendum concerning stewardship. And since then, the County Board has appointed a ad hoc planning committee to deal with the stewardship issue and to try to develop a um, structure for dealing with stewardship down the road, year, year to year, mm -hmm. on an annual basis. And you were one of the people appointed to that, to that committee. I'm on that committee. And I don't know. It's a large committee. We're 14, yes, 14 people yes, in that committee. Yeah. One of our larger committees to deal with. But uh, um, we've been meeting for a month or two and, and trying to develop a structure for this. Maybe you could just fill our viewers in a little bit about uh, some of the goals of that committee and, and, and where we are in that process. Sure. Uh, as you recall, the, uh, the stewardship question itself um, is kind of the uh, umbrella that we're, we're operating under. Mm -hmm. Uh, some of the specific goals that the committee is dealing with is identifying some of the some of the existing programs um, that are operating in the county that uh, that could be related to stewardship, uh, identifying some funding sources, uh, some potential funding sources. Um, uh, other other items would be uh, suggesting a, a governance structure so that when uh, the the, the, the the, pro the program comes to, to fruit, there's a, a body there to deal with it and uh, <coughs> identifying potential categories for funding, uh, different type projects for funding, um, identifying any state or national type of, of funding um, sources. And uh, once these meetings are, are finished and uh, we're looking at uh, probably May or June, um, these uh, these suggestions or recommendations will be uh, compiled and, are, and then uh, put in a preliminary report. 
Uh, after that point, uh, there will be a public hearing held for the public to comment and have input uh, on the process. And uh, the, uh, after that, the uh, final report is due to the resource committee, I believe, of the county board by July 1st. Right. So. And we're on track pretty much? We, uh, yes, I would say we've been meeting, I believe, since the end of January. Um, we talked a little bit about uh, funding issues at our last meeting. Um, we have another meeting coming up uh, next Wednesday, and I believe we're going to finish the, the funding issues and uh, be getting into the, the next, next part of the, 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 the structure. Um, we have um, uh, identified uh, topics for each meeting that we do have so that uh, they're listed so that if there's anybody in the public that would want to attend the, these meetings, they're welcome to do so. Right. They, they are public you, you meetings. You mentioned a public hearing down the road, but right. all these meetings that, that we're having, I believe every other week on Wednesday evening, yes. uh, these are all public hearings yes. and they're all yes. open to, mm -hmm. to, uh, to the public. And yes. we, we give a few minutes at the end of the meeting for, uh, mm -hmm. for some public input yeah. at all those meetings also. So mm -hmm. it's not like they're limited to, right. uh, to see what our final right. result is at the public hearing, right. but, but they're, welcome. Mm -hmm. they're welcome to give their input as we go. Mm -hmm. Right now, Lil Meerstein from the Conservation Association is, is chairing the yes. committee, mm -hmm. and it is a diverse committee. And one of the things that I've enjoyed observing as they're discussing how a stewardship program could be developed or governed. And again, they're simply going to be making recommendations to the Resources Committee and then on to the full county board. Mm -hmm. But I think one of the real eye-openers where you've got a 40-plus million dollar state stewardship program, you have all these other opportunities out there, but the key thing is you have to have a local match. Yes. So some people who are observing this as well as sitting on the committee May and after our discussion, well, we're doing a lot of good things in mm -hmm. Sheboygan County. What do we need this for? And that's what the policy makers are ultimately going to be determining. But one of the key issues is if you're going to tap into these state dollars or these federal dollars or be able to leverage local dollars, you have to have a local match. And that's going to be one of the key areas that the committee's discussing. And as you said, the final, the final decision will come sometime between now and and budget time in October uh, when the county board has to decide what level uh, we're going to fund this mm -hmm. and, and, and what, what we'll put in the budget mm -hmm. as far as funding for this. So. And the county board just heard earlier this week that it's going to be another tight it's budget going to be year. A tight budget, so. Yeah. so the challenge is there again this challenge year. Challenge is there. That's what we get paid a big bucks for, making those decisions. <laughs> Thanks, Pat. This was, this was good. This is, Thank uh, you. It's nice to see what, what is being done for for the different areas of, of the county, the rural areas, the, the urban areas as far as water quality and some of the programs you, you have. And, and uh, uh, I think our viewers maybe have a better understanding of, of what the county provides in this area. Next month, <clears throat> we're going to have our veterans veteran service officer, Jim Riesenberg, with us. Um, it'll be the month of May. We'll be approaching Memorial Day. And, and, and uh, we thought it would be appropriate to get Jim in and, and, and here are some of the services that the Veterans Service Office provides to our veterans. And I'd, I'd just like to, uh, to suggest to the viewers that uh, one of the things I like to do with our program is uh, we're not live. This is taped, and it's going to be shown throughout the month. But if you have any questions that you'd like us to ask, to answer, and, and you can't call in because we're not live, um, give a call to our office, 459-3103, or uh, write to our office and ask us questions and, and if we do get some questions every month we'll try to answer one or two questions at the beginning of our show and, and if it's something we're not, we're not sharing with you we'll be, we'll be happy to answer your questions. So next month, uh, Jim Riesenberg, Veteran Service Officer, thank you Pat. Thank you. And thank you for watching. <laughs>